What's going on guys today here? We are with Andrew at Family Family. And what are you gonna teach us today, Andrew? Uh, I'm gonna teach everyone the wicking process for solventless ice water extraction. It's a bit faster and cleaner method of prepping your trays for freeze drying over the normal method of just scooping right onto a parchment line tray. This will get your trays perfectly even and as much water out as possible before starting your freeze drying process. And this will really help reduce the time that you need your freeze dryer down, as well as um, just keeping your overall quality there. Fantastic, let's get to it. Ready. So to start out with the wicking process, I got everything assembled right here, but I'll break it down so everyone knows what we're doing. Right here, I have a 25 micron mesh screen. The 25 micron is the finest mesh we are collecting hash on. So this screen will actually catch any hash that we pour through it. But underneath this 25 micron screen, we have a 305 mesh dry sift screen. And while this is normally a dry sifting screen or some people may know it as a print screen, we're actually gonna use it for ice water extraction and when we line this tray with our 25 micron, we're just gonna give it a quick spritz of water. And this is gonna allow it to form fit to the tray. Just that down, there we are. And then I can just kind of push in the corners here, get more water. And now the screen is form fitting to the tray. So that way, as we pour our hash in, it won't go anywhere other than where we need it to be. And I'm gonna take my jar of all of this hash. It's our 73 micron. I'm gonna give it a nice shake and stir, get it all mixed up. So how come you have your hash in a, in a jar? What's up with that? So the reason I collect into a jar is this process takes a lot of advantage of it. And when you're actually collecting your hash during your multiple pulls, the jar is just way faster and easier for collection. You just grab the jar and bring it to the bag and you can scoop directly into this jar. And the ice water will help keep your hash preserved in a good consistency up until you're ready to actually wick whether it's at the end of your wash or potentially halfway through if you're having a really good yield. And at this stage, I have so much hash in my jar, I actually wanna go ahead and get a first tray of 73 prepped. And now that I've shaken this jar up, most of the hash is now back in suspension and I'm ready to pour through this sifter. And what the sifter is doing is it's mostly catching bits of ice for me. And you really wanna make sure that you have as little ice as possible in your hash tray, as this is just extra water that you'll have to remove and freeze dry. And each cube is going to add quite a bit of time to your drying process. And you wanna make sure as you're doing this to, as you get lower, keep uh, shaking and swirling your jar, because this hash will get pretty thick at this micron. And we're just gonna do another pour out, and I'm not gonna leave anything behind in the jar, so I'm gonna give that a quick rinse as well. So let me see if I understand this correctly. If we left extra water or ice in this tray, that would just be extra work that the freeze dryer would have to do to remove the water, right? Because the point yep. of the freeze dryer is to remove water. Yep, so every ice cube you have in your tray is just going to add like an extra half an hour to an hour to your freeze drying time. With this method, it's possible to get a about one to two kilo tray dried in about 36 hours. In what size freeze dryer? Uh, just, you can either do it in a medium or a large uh, harvest ripe freeze dryer. Uh, pharmaceuticals are preferred because their um, main drying phase has a lower shelf temp than the home and commercial freeze dryers. If you're doing trim, it's not really a huge deal to use the pharmaceuticals, but if you're trying to do live rosin, you really need to keep that shelf temp lower. 
So you do have to use a pharmaceutical if your goal is live rosin. If you're just trying to make some trim hash, a regular home freeze dryer or commercial from Harvest Right will do just the same job. And there we are. So this, and we can show here, there is basically no hash left behind in the sifter or in the jar. So very good transfer, no transfer loss during this. And then now that most of this water is gone, what I'm gonna do now is just slide it on over here to some microfiber towels. And I actually can reuse these because these just get saturated with water. I just put them out to dry so I'm not wasting a bunch of uh, microfiber cloths. And now what the microfiber cloths are doing is they're literally wicking the water out of the tray. As you can see, it's a pretty quick process, but now our hash is pretty much free of all the water you could actually hope for. And if I were to lift this guy up, you oh, can yeah. see uh, how it sucked last bits of water out. This tray's got a... So you know, this is a phenomenal time-saving technique. Oh, yep. Especially if you are struggling with Free dryer space. This is this is an amazing technique, and I appreciate you sharing this with us. Oh, no problem. And one of my favorite things about this technique is the tray is pretty much even the whole way through. So this will prevent the icicles that a lot of people experience because you're not trying to make a clump as less saturated in water as possible. Versus here, we don't care about how um, clay-like the hash is when we collect it, because it goes back into a mason jar of ice water anyway. At the end, with this wicking process, it'll suck out all the water you could really hope for, to the point where now the freeze dryer is really just taking the little bit of water that has surface tension between the glands, but there's no excess water, no pooling of water, which uh, can really increase your freeze drying time. And now to transfer onto your harvest right tray, it's a very simple process. You just want to get this end here as close to the edge of this tray here. Then you just grab and you slide the tray on out. As you can see, quick, easy transfer, easily around a few hundred grams on here. And then something you can do to help with your freeze drying even more. Let's go to through here, pick up the screen, and you're gonna make a bunch of cracks. And these cracks are gonna increase the amount of surface area of the hash trip patty that's touching the vacuum. And the more surface area exposed to the vacuum, the faster you can help increase your freeze drying time. Brilliant, And Just with brilliant. this, uh, I, I typically like to fold these edges in because when you're Freeze dryer is fully cold and this isn't completely frozen. Kind of like your tongue sticking to a frozen lamppost. The, a very cold uh, tray holder can grab this and kind of stick to it. So if you're going right into the freeze dryer, you just want to make sure uh, most of the screen is far down as possible. A potential trick since I'm doing this halfway through the wash is I can just stick this in a normal freezer and let it freeze completely. And then there won't be any sticking issue with the, a cold freeze dryer that's ready for it. And now I'm gonna walk this over to the freezer where it will be good till the end of the wash and I'm ready to load my freeze dryer. 